Hey guys, welcome to another A Online video. Today I'm going to paint the lucky cat that I made last week, and I've got all my painting stuff set up in my backyard. So let's go check it out. Okay, guys, welcome to my painting setup here. I've got a few bits and bobs that I'm going to need for painting. So I've got a paint palette to the left there with the colors of paint that I'm going to need. I've got a few different sizes of paint brushes here. I've also got a pot of water to wash my brush when I need to and off to the side I also have a paper towel to dry my brush on. First thing I'm going to do is put down a background colour. I've got my biggest brush here and I'm mixing up a combination of white and brown to put down all over as the background of the cat's fur. This colour looks a little bit pale and pinkish, but just remember that this whole cat is going to go into the kiln for firing and when it comes out, all of the colours are going to be a lot brighter than they seem now. As I'm painting, I've got a bit of a plan in my head about what's going to be background colour and what's going to be a different colour, so I'm leaving some areas, like the ears, white so that I can fill them in with pink later. Before we get any further into the video guys, I just want to apologise for my hair which is going crazy and blowing in front of the camera all the time. Uh, it was very windy outside when I filmed, so next time I'm going to get that right and film in a less windy location. This is all a learning experience, am I right? When most of the background colour is done, I change over to a smaller brush and put colour into those little fiddly parts that I couldn't reach with my big brush. Now that my backdrop colour is all finished, I'm washing my brush really carefully and changing over to a small brush with brown on it to do some furry, stripy bits on my cat. My lucky cat is based on my pet cat, Scully. So she's a tabby cat with lots of brown and black stripy bits, so I'm trying to replicate that on my lucky cat. When I'm making these markings, I think it looks best when my brush gets a little bit dry because it makes the markings look a lot more scratchy and fur-like. I'm choosing the positions of my markings carefully, following the curves of the cat's legs and tummy. If you can't figure out where the best place to put your stripes are, why not look up a picture of a tabby cat or a tiger and get inspiration from that. I'm also putting a little swipe of colour onto the cat's paws because I think that looks super cute. I put a little outline in brown around each ear to help it stand out. I also put some fuzzy little paint strokes inside because I thought that looked cute. Looking back at this video, I've now realised that I forgot to do that in the left ear. Oh well. When I was doing the stripes on the tail, I found that I had to switch to a smaller brush to get the detail that I wanted. If ever you're having trouble painting something really detailed, just think, do I need a smaller brush? One thing that I didn't forget to do on both ears are these little brown foxy ear tips, which I think look super cute. After I'd done all of my stripes, I went around the tail with a thin brown line to serve as a shadow and make it stand out from the body.
I also carefully filled in this line that I carved on the front to emphasize the cat's fluffy white belly. Now it's time to do the face, so I'm washing my brush super carefully in my water and I'm going to dry it on my paper towel. I actually dried it on my board here, so that was naughty of me. I'm getting a little bit of yellow on my smallest brush and I'm going to carefully draw two circular yellow irises into the cat's eyes. I'm leaving a little bit of white on the sides because I think that looks realistic. Next up, I'm getting the black and I'm carefully painting two pupils on top of the yellow. If you haven't gazed into a cat's eyes recently and you can't remember what they look like, then you can always look one up online before you do your next painting or sculpture of a cat. After I'd done the pupils, I put some elegant black lines over the cat's eyes. I wish I could have shown you that, but I put my head in the way. After that, I used black paint with a tiny brush to fill in all of the whiskery bits on the face. I decided to go over this line to emphasize the cat's smiling mouth. You can see that I kept going back to get a little bit more paint on my brush because I wanted my line to be sharp and clear not all scratchy like the lines of the cat's fur. Did a really good job with my line on the right hand side, but on the left hand side I made a little mistake, so I just washed my brush and went back to my base colour and painted over the little error that I had made. There we go, all fixed. Then it was time to fill in the ears with pink. This pink looks almost the same as the background colour, but once the cat goes into the kiln, the pink's going to get so much more vibrant and is going to stand out a lot more. I wanted the colour of the ears to blend out to white at the top, and I had to use lots of layers of white to get the colour that I wanted. That's a really common problem to have when you're putting a lighter colour over the top of a darker colour. I also used pink to paint the nose and then straight away decided that I didn't like it, so I went over the top with black. Next I did a black line around the outside of my ears. I don't normally like to do black outlines around everything in my sculptures, but this time when I was looking at Lucky Cats on the internet, I saw that they had a very cartoonish style that I wanted to replicate in my own. When you're doing an artwork, it's really fun to experiment like that and put lines in where you wouldn't normally put them, because they can change the whole style of your artwork. Now the main body of my cat is finished and I can move on to a part that I find really fun, painting all of the accessories and details of the cat. First, I'm going to do the collar in red. I chose bold colours like yellow for the eyes and red for the collar because when I was looking at pictures of Japanese lucky cats, I saw that they often used really bold colours. 
I'm also going to paint the fish blue soon, so that'll be all of the primary colours used. When I'm painting the little fish, you can see that I'm using a dabbing motion with my paintbrush because I really want all of the blue paint to get into the little scale markings that I made. I really want some contrasting scale colours on my fish, so on the side here you can see me mixing a light green colour to put over the top of the blue. I mixed it out of dark green and yellow and it turned out that I needed twice as much yellow as dark green because dark green is such a powerful colour. I'm using a special technique called dry brushing here to put the green onto my fish by just putting a tiny bit of paint on my brush and lightly brushing it on so that the green doesn't get into the scale markings. It's tricky to see here, but it means that my fish will be all green with little blue scales. While we're zoomed in here, let's paint the cat's bell yellow as well. And if I can get my head out of the way, you'll see me putting in the last final detail, the fish's eye and mouth. Now let's zoom out and see the final product. Thanks so much for being here while I paint my lucky cat guys. See you in the next video.